Hi everyone, I want to quickly go over the list of medications to be cautious with when it comes to heart failure. Okay, let's go. Drugs that you need to take with caution or that your provider will be cautious with before prescribing to you. One, tumor necrosis factor medications like infliximab is associated with a new heart failure or could worsen the existing one. Glucocorticoids, for example, fludrocortisone and hydrocortisone should be taken cautiously because it could increase sodium retention and increase water retention. And that is going to be a big problem because we even need the lasers to send out water from the you know, lungs before pulmonary edema and now you are taking more medications that will retain more fluid. We need to be careful about that. non steroid anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, celecosbe, naprosine, and the list goes on, can increase sodium retention as well and increase peripheral vascular constriction. But in heart failure, what we need is vasodilation, not constriction. And they can also decrease response to AC inhibitors and diuretics. The phenadine and astemizo are antihistamines. The second generation, for that matter, they can prolong the QT syndrome. And when there's prolonged QT syndrome, then the individual could be tilted to toss the point. And with toss the point, there's possibility of ventricular tachycardia. When there's ventricular tachycardia, the individual could degenerate to ventricular fibrillation. And with ventricular fibrillation, as likelihood of asystole if there is no defibrillation on time. And with that asystole, mortuary, that is depth. Cousin channel blockers, yes, particularly dihydropyridines. But amlodipine and felodipine are okay. However, I will choose not to even go near them. They have negative anotropy, and that is not what we need in heart failure. And uh, arrhythmic agents, amiodarone, digocene, and beta blockers are okay depending on the type of heart failure you're dealing with. Never, never use sotalol or ibutiline. Minocidine will retain sodium and retain water. Metformin in heart failure and diabetes mellitus will give us a big problem because metformin on its own has lactic acidosis as side effects. And in the phase of heart failure or renal failure or hepatorenal failure, then the lactic acidosis will be on the rise. There's only then the ion lights, rostiglitazone and the rest will retain water, will retain sodium, and will worsen the heart failure. Silotazole so is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor that will induce exacerbation of heart failure. Carbonazepine, you all know what it's all used for, will give bradycardia and negative anotrope. That's not what we want in heart failure. Amphetamines will give abtention, tachycardia, and arrhythmias. Each of these could cause heart failure on its own. Clozapine, fortunately for people with schizophrenia, clozapine can give cardiomyopathy, myocarditis, and long QT syndrome. And I've just explained what will be the sequel when it comes to long QT syndrome. From long QT syndrome to, to that point, ventricular tachycardia, 
to ventricular fibrillation, to accessory, and death, if no intervention immediately. Agors can give valvular fibrosis and increase sympathetic activities. Regolite can give valvular fibrosis. Tricyclic antidepressants can give severe arrhythmias and negative inotrope. Salbutamol can give decreased potassium because salbutamol can send potassium back into the cell and can trigger arrhythmia. And of course, it will increase sympathetic activity. Septra, that is combination of trimetoprene and solamethosazole, can increase the level of potassium, particularly when used with angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blockers, or with mineral receptor antagonists like spironolactone, amyloride, epilurinol, or ultra -imterin. And of course, in the face of acute kidney injury, Itraconazole will increase the jocin level because the fungi or antifungi medication. But it's an enzyme inhibitor. Okay? And the fungi, most of them will inhibit the hepatic enzymes. And when they inhibit the hepatic enzyme, the metabolism of any medication you take at that time will be reduced. And that will allow for the effect of the affected medication the more. So when you prescribe the justine and the person has fungal infection on the skin or on the circulatory system, I prescribe a traconazole or any of those class, then watch out for more effect of digocene or digocene toxicity. And of, of course, it also has negative inotrope. Alloperidol erythromycin can prolong the QT. Like I've said, from long QT syndrome to to the point. To the point to BTAC, VFib, acetyl, and possibly death if not reverse immediately. Kindly subscribe to my channel. The list of medications to watch out for is not exhaustive based on this presentation. If we go over all the presentations I've made, as far as heart failure is concerned, you're going to get more files. So when you subscribe, you'll be able to get my presentations immediately they are published. The next will be on differential diagnosis of heart failure. Thank you.